Hey there, greetings everyone. Today is going to be a little different bit of a format for the Cybersecurity Show. I'm going to talk about Zor encryption for obfuscations of payloads. It was uh, something I know about and have heard of and have, you know, it's a thing that people do to get that fully undetectable business going on, but I had never done it. So I took the opportunity that happened, uh, kind of came along in the form of one of my weekly CTI videos on the Typhon uh, malware. And I thought, hey, this, this might be something other people want to see. They might not be interested necessarily in Typhon, but they might be interested in Zor obfuscation. So I'm going to take that piece out of that video, and I'm going to give it to you here today. Enjoy. So string obfuscation is something I'm really interested in. How can I make it to where antivirus, EDR, these these solutions for trying to like look and see is this a bad thing and then put the kibosh on it if it is how do i get around that and i, I remember first kind of bumping into this you know as you become a, a, someone who's into cybersecurity, you obviously are going to run into something like metasploit you're like oh cool i can use this metasploit thing and i can it's got this msf venom thing and i can generate these i can generate an exe that gives me a reverse shell. This is crazy. That's super awesome. And then you find out in like 10 seconds after you generate your first EXE and you upload it to your target, that Windows Defender goes, what in the Sam Hill is this? And you're like, what? It, it's, a, it's just a file. And you're like, yeah, it's a file, all right. It's a file of nasty badness made from that dumb, stupid, stupid, dumb metasploit you're trying to metasploit here aren't you did you did you bring the metasploity stuff up in my house it's like a it's like a dad chastising his son for you know he finds him smoking cigarettes what have you done son what have you what are you smoking in my house you crazy son and then he's gonna like you know chastise him windows defender chastised me real quick and i'm like huh okay how do i get around that these demonstration things are kind of hard. That's that's not cool. I I want to do the things, but now I gotta right. And then you're probably saying the same thing, right? If 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 Windows Defender busts all the Metasploit stuff, then it doesn't really work. It, it can. It's just hard, right? You have to do things like obfuscations. You have to change the way things work, and the way things look, so that when the when Defender or whatever you know, uh, Sopos or uh, Kaspersky or whomever, right? Avast. They go, what's this you got there? And it just goes, oh, that's, that's weird. I mean, I can't tell if it does anything weird or not, but uh, it's weird. You know, I guess it doesn't do anything bad because I don't see anything bad happening. I don't know any signatures that are around this. That's what obfuscation does for us. And that's what goes on here, right? And this was one of the things that I've seen a lot. Now, I have historically, right? It says during execution of the malware, decodes the base 64 right because this is the string is obfuscated by using base 64 encoding i have done that that was one of the first things i learned oh you can base 64 encode stuff and then it makes it a whole lot more difficult for these systems to tell you know the, the good from the bad and the other thing that i've noticed that has been kind of popular especially lately is applying this zor function to various strings during execution, the malware decodes the base64, generating a UTF-8 character encoded string. It is then deobfuscated using a ZOR key stored in the malware's configuration or hard-coded in the decrypt string value. The ZOR key based, is used based on the mode passed when the function is called each time. The resulting string is then decoded from base64 again, creating a plain text string to continue the operation. So there's levels of base 64 encoding and you know, so you got a base 64 and then you Zor and then you get, you know, you get the idea, right? It's kind of jumping around. Here's the code that makes that happen. This is written in um, C sharp. Yeah. C sharp. I'm not a C sharp. I, I dev, right? I can kind of look at this and see a bit what's going on. Like I can see right. Encoding UTF eight, get string convert from base 64 string data. So whatever the data is, you can see that's being brought into the decrypt string, string data int mode equals blah, blah, blah. Right. And then you have 
string encoding UTF you have get string convert from base 64 and there's a base 64 encoded string then you got a loop and then you can see Azure operation right here that little that little hat a little carrot they call it the carrot um, that's letting you know that, that that's what it's doing and there's some more Azure like there's the Azure key being used and so on and so forth but I thought man that doesn't I mean that's cool but I don't know how to do that I want to learn how to do that so guess what I didn't like I'm not like an expert at it or anything now but I did learn how to do that let's jump over here let's open a terminal and let's expand expand right so I see if I can remember how to do this off the top of my head Python 3 let's just jump into the what is it IE or whatever it's called so um, or do it. It's, you know, this will take me forever, and I'll I'll fumble this up. I wrote it all down, so you know, I obviously don't want to forget. I don't know why I just closed that because I'm in, I'm sick and tired, <laughs> right? Uh, I've got a couple of files here. I got shell.py. Let me go into documents. That's where I save them all. There we go. So I just wrote them in Python. It's probably the thing I'm most familiar with. So that's what I went with. And I've got this Zor setup.txt file so that I can remember how to do this. We'll just cat that. Zor setup.txt. And you're like, what is all this garbage on the screen on the screen? Well, it's a lot of garbage. So it starts off with step one, generate a payload with MSF Venom. So yes, I did use MSF Venom to generate a payload. So there it is right there. I don't know if you can bam, let's kind of blow that up a little bit. I've got uh, the payload is a Python, right? Because I'm, I'm working in Python. Gave me shell reverse, TCP, good old shell reverse like we like. And then L host, right? Give it the attack IP, L port, whatever the port is you're going to put it on. And then the format is Python. Simple, right? We like this. And then it does some stuff. And then there's the payload side of 400 bytes. Payload side, size of 400 bytes. And there's my payload right there. You'll notice there's some base 64 business going on having a great time I actually ran this so i just saved it to a file i ran it in the virus total not a ton of stuff i think only three things detected it but that's three systems that i had to worry about right so now if i want full fully what do they we got fud right fully undetectable you go to step two base 64 encode your payload as a bytes object in python so i just made a variable called python shell you know you got to do the import base 64 thing and then we do base 64 encode right so base 64 dot b64 encode and then i slap it the bytes object which is that payload I just grab that slap it in there and you're good to go now now i have this python shell variable that has that information in there and it is a bytes object which i needed to do all right, step three, print the base64 encoded payload. All right, so just print it out because we're going to need that. There it is. You just print that bytes base64 encoded payload. Fun. Next, we need to create and print a key to Zor with. If you're not familiar with Zoring or Xoring, however you want to call it, it is basically like if the two things are the same, then that equals one. If the two things are different, that equals zero. Get the idea? So if I've got one and one, that equals one. If I got one and zero, that equals zero. Okay? If I've got zero and zero, that equals one. Because they're the same. Okay? Now, I was reading about how to do this. And you have to use this function in Python called zip. Let's kind of jump back and see if I can look at it real quick. Uh, and show you there were some time three and then zip. And it's for like creating tuples. I want the docs. I want the docs. It's a built in function. Here we go. Come on. You can do it. There we go. And then just find it in here. And since it's in Z, it's the only one there. Right? You got this iterables. So this is kind of how this works. Let's see if I can make it viewable. Where the heck did that go? Did it go down? I guess we're at the last thing here. I can't believe I did that. There we go. So we got this four item in zip and then you got range. So the range is three. So it's giving you three things. 
and you got fee five fo fum, you'll notice there are four things to iterate through and you can get this error if the things aren't identically the same length. That was the one of the first things I noticed. Throat's getting a little, so give me a second here. Aha, oh man, I, I hate being sick. I don't know about y'all. So, because that can cause problems, even though it does say that it will just kind of iterate through. So if your, if your key value is smaller than the things you're iterating through, then it'll just like start back over at the beginning of the key. So you, it should be fine. But I just wanted to avoid anything. So I made the key the same length as the payload. Okay. So that's what, that's what I'm using here. So let's go back. I don't need you anymore. Come on over here. Yeah, Typhon. Booyah. Uh, this is what I need. So this is this is how I made that happen. To create a key, I just did this import secrets thing. Tell it how long I want it to be. So I just have length equals the like how long is Python shell. That's what I wanted to know. Like how long in bytes is this thing? And then printed that out, and I see it's 536 bytes. Okay, cool. Now that I know how long the key needs to be, I say key equals secrets dot token bytes byte length, and then print key. Right. So that byte length, and I just created that variable right there. Byte length equals 536. You're like, where'd you get that, Daniel? Right there. And then bam, there's the key, which I need to print out as well, because you're gonna need that. So now that I can see it. I can now Zor the base 64 encoded payload with the key. And here is that process right here. I just call it an encoded payload. You throw it bytes and you can see you've got the Zor function right here. Like it's got A and B. So we're going to Zor A and B together. And then A and B are the things that we're going to pass you through zip. And there's zip. I'm throwing it Python shell and the key. And there's my output right there. Bajanga. Fun, right? So now that I have that all done, I have all those bits and pieces. I can actually create the, you know, quote unquote malware. My bunny ears. Hop, hop. Uh, which is shell.py. So I'll cat uh, shell.py. And here we go. And you're like, woozy dozy, right? So there's where I had to import base 64 because we're going to do some base 64 stuff, right? And then PLD or payload, as it were. That is going to be, right, my final last thing. That's what this is. You'll notice that that should be the same. XABPY. And we have XABPY. So that's all good. That's all the same. Then I need to bring the key in because I need to de-encrypt or de-zor or de-encode. I don't know if zoring is an encoding or an encrypting. Not 100% on that. Either way, I need that key. So I bring that in. There's the key. Slap that in there. Then I did some hocus pocus. All right. And I just re-ran the zor, right? So I have zor, right? A and B for A. And B in zip, run it through the payload, do it with the key, and then open says me. We have to base 64 decode and turn it into UTF 8 string. Bada bing, base 64 decode, uh, base 64.b64 decode, throw hocus pocus in there, whatever that is. That's the unzored action right there. And then you have it at dot decode and tell it, I want it to be in UTF 8, which turns it into a string. Once I have that, well, that's my original uh, MSF Venom payload. I can just execute that. Let's have some fun, shall we? Sudo uh, nc-nvlp on port 443. Put in my password. Booyah. Let's jump into Windows, shall we? I think we shall. So I happen to have Kali Linux installed with WSL. And let's pretend we've already got the malware on here, which we do. There it is right there, shell.py. And if I do Python 3, shell.py, 
You'll notice it doesn't seem to be doing anything. We jump back over and we see a connection to, I can say a host name and it's Hackbox. Bam, I can do ID. You can see Booyah. So cool, right? There's shell.py right there. You'll notice this is not, right? I've got, some, I've got an old key here and all sorts of stuff. I am on, that would be stuff I would want to steal at this point in time if I were, you know, so inclined. So <clears throat> that's how that works. That was really cool to learn. Hopefully you like that. Well, there you go. Hopefully that was a good learning experience for you. I knew it was for this guy. Uh, learned a lot doing that. Really interesting. Got my hands back into some Python. You know, I've been kind of playing around with them, but it was, it was kind of nice to be back in the Python world. Uh, I might just kind of go that way again for a while. Who knows, right? I can do whatever I want. There's nothing you can do to stop me. That's right. Hey, by the way, don't use any of this stuff we teach you here for malicious purposes. That would be, you know, wrong. I don't, I don't, it's, it's weird. I got to say that, but here's the thing. Don't do wrong things like illegal activities. We don't appreciate that. No one does, right? So knock it off if you were even thinking about it. Knock that thought right out of your head and use these skills as like a red teamer, a pen tester, a researcher, something to that effect to help increase security, help, pe help keep people safe. That would be awesome. And then you'd be awesome, right? Everybody likes an awesome person. So there's that. Thanks for watching, everyone. You should definitely check out Weekly CTI if you haven't because it's a lot of fun. We learn about a lot of different threats that are out there and we pick up a skill or two from time to time as we did today. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching and we will see you next time. Until then, keep hacking.